Good morning or afternoon or evening, depending on when you see this video. It's a beautiful day and I have filmed so many videos for you guys, um, but I've been busy, busy, busy as I'm about to show you. Uh, a lot has changed here in the past couple weeks. I apologize for not being consistent with the videos. Things should be picking up now, uh, but I really just had to get in there and get things done. Um, without any kind of distractions or anything. So with that, let me show you how things are making out. Still looking gorgeous. Pansies that I planted are beautiful. And then this rose is unfortunately fizzling out right now, but I do have some really beautiful footage of what it looked like when it was more in full bloom. So I'd like to get close to show you these Benjamin Britten roses because they are looking so, so beautiful. And these have a wonderful fragrance too. Kind of like a fruity scent. They are just gorgeous. I'll be cutting off the spent blooms and hoping for a repeat flowering. That's the Benjamin Breton Rose. And then you can see my hydrangeas and everything are starting to come into bloom. I did plant my urn since I saw you guys last. So let me show you that. This has, oh, I love it. It has marguerite daisies, uh, diamond frost euphorbia, um, white night sweet alyssum, uh, blue bacopa, and dichondra silver falls. And I have to say, this is probably one of my most favorite urns that I have ever ever put in here. Um, I love it. I love the look. I think it's so airy and pretty. I've never planted daisies in a container like this before. So hopefully they'll continue to stay that pretty because they look so good. So this big, beautiful hydrangea that is just all covered is uh, Invincible Limetta. It's one of my favorites. And then I have Bobo hydrangeas around the urn. You can see everything is really, really filling in beautifully this year. The sprinter boxwoods are all forming a nice hedge. That's a dwarf butterfly bush in the back. I think it's the pugster blue. One change that I'm gonna make is planting some of the taller alliums that would be blooming around this time. That way for next year, I'll plant those in fall. You'll see those purple, you know, little little dots just floating all over. I think that would be really pretty. And I'd like to maybe put some iris in here too. Uh, but I've got the tulips and those are looking great. And then, the, and then I also have um, Millennium Allium. And I do have some Pow Wow White. Uh, I just covered them up with cloches because the bunnies were nibbling on them earlier in the season and they are starting to come back now. Uh, but I have a um, Echinacea purpurea over here. And then I've got the Echinacea powwow white here and those get huge and beautiful. Um, this rose, okay, this rose is so spectacular. This is Rise Up Lilac Days Rose. And I planted it last year and it was just a, a tiny little thing. And now you can see it is just absolutely covered in buds and in fresh blooms. It's just gorgeous. I have my sweet peas here. They are falling over quite a bit because there is so much going on in this particular uh, bed here. I need to cut back these daffodils very much to get some more light and air and maybe put a few little annuals around the edges there. So I'll do that soon, even though I know you're supposed to wait for the foliage to yellow. We'll see. <laughs> I'm not going to wait for that. <laughs> not in this situation. If it was in the landscape, I would. But here, I'll, I'll cut them back. Look how pretty. Look how pretty. Sweet little bumblebee. I love that about these particular roses. They're real open in the center, which is very appealing to the bumblebees. This is Brother Stefan Clematis. And you can see my window box is all sorts of different things. It's just like a bunch of different colors and things this year. Geraniums and petunias and ivy and just, I, I don't know that it was necessarily planned, but I took a lot of plants I had on hand and kind of just jammed them in there. So we'll see how it does. It looks pretty right now. <laughs> I mostly plant 
this particular window box because we enjoy it in the family room and it's like kind of our little mud room area there's a bench there and you can see the little flowers kind of floating in the window there that's a huge change <laughs> a really huge change that i didn't even discuss or talk about or anything so i don't know even how it started i started thinking about what wanting more from this garden from this particular area and you can see what has happened over the past few weeks um, this is a parterre of sorts that I'm working on and it will have a diamond pattern in the center and then I have some perennials planted in each of the quadrants this was a huge huge project and really I, I think I knocked this out in maybe a week yeah, I think probably last week this time I was saying that I wanted to do this. And um, those are all sprinter boxwoods. They're quart size, which was what the little ones over here were two years ago. So if you can imagine in two years time, those shrubs will be touching and you'll be able to see a defined pattern. Um, it's going to look so good. So for rounded boxwoods on the ends and then just a rectangle and then a diamond shape in the middle i just think it's going to look so good and in this area i would love to plant you know some tulips maybe some iris and things like that and then have the summer perennials come in but for me you know it was a struggle i had the fence here that we, you know we removed because really that was just a kind of a division between the driveway when it was a driveway and our back garden we didn't want to see the car so we put up a picket fence it looked charming and you didn't have to see our car then in the driveway and i had at the time uh pink knockout roses all along it um back when that was uh serving that purpose well then i decided i didn't want the fence you know how that went and then i planted the row of boxwoods as a division well after i moved the vegetable garden to the back which i can't wait to show you because i'm loving everything right now um it started to not make sense like why do i have a division of boxwoods this is wonderful because what this does is it ties the two spaces together some of it creeps into the backyard area some of it creeps into this area so you can enjoy it from all sides i was sitting in our family room over here and looking out the window and i thought i can't ever see what's over on the other side i can't enjoy what's on the other side and now when we sit in that in the family room and eat breakfast i can see this whole beautiful layout now and it just kind of really I don't know I think it gives a nice long view it actually makes our tiny yard feel a lot larger um which is surprising I feel like you know the more I'm adding the larger the garden space is feeling I really love it um and I just can't wait to see it mature and fill in now that has had me in a dilemma trying to figure out where I'm going to plant my dahlias because I do want the dahlias. So what I'm doing is I'm trying to kind of more naturalistically incorporate them into the borders. I've got two bamboo stakes here and those will have two of my dinner plate dahlias. And then I've got three over here. So they'll be kind of floating there. So not a wall and that's okay. Um, you know, I've said this before, you know, I'm not a flower farmer. Uh, wouldn't that be the job to have? It's just, you know, my small garden. I want to enjoy everything to the fullest and not just have just, you know, a big area devoted to dahlias, even though I love them because then that space is empty then when there's nothing there. This is not empty. This is something I'm going to seriously enjoy. I'm already enjoying it. Um, I have a sundial here that matches a sundial that my mother has. Um, it's salt glaze pottery so that's really special to me i feel like me and my mom have that connection and um i don't know there's something about this sundial that is just so unique to me and my mom i can remember you know going out shopping with her and her picking out this sundial so when i look at it i think of my mom she has hers in her herb garden and it just makes me happy um kind of like you know 
to have the same piece that she has. I think of her when I say it. And then I built this little bamboo structure here um, for four more dahlias. So I'll have some, you know, interspersed throughout the garden instead of a great big row. And it really, everything really looks so much more open. It really does. So to put this together, um, it's just four really thick bamboo stakes. I think these were eight foot lengths. And then I just took some smaller lengths, some skinnier bamboo, and just did like a little weave in between them. That's just to stabilize it and kind of make them all straight, you know, because when you put in any kind of stake like this, it can get wonky and a little bit uneven. So now it's not. I didn't go all the way up because I don't want it to look like a wall. I don't want to block everything. This is just for stability. And then, you know, we'll see how it goes. So one thing that I'm creating right here is a path. Before, when I had the boxwoods coming straight across and the fence coming straight across, it completely blocked me from here. And it might not seem like a big deal, but with the greenhouse and the vegetable garden here, you know, this is the shed space now and we walk this way constantly. This is it, this is the path. And we would find ourselves, you know, doing a little shimmy to the side and trying to get past boxwoods and things. So I'm making an actual, actual path here. There will be a couple stepping stones. I'm still working out, you know, the gravel situation, but this will be stepping stones. And you can see I've created and extended. I love the curve because I love curves in a garden, but everything is so straight here just because that's just how it ended up being and how it kind of flows here. So to have this nice curve feels so nice. I went ahead and I edged this with the half moon um, edger shovel. And this is actually sheet mulched. I did not dig up any of this turf that was here. Um, so I used cardboard that will suppress the, and eventually kill out the grass and then just laid my topsoil on top. Um, definitely follow Jay's Garden Journal, J-A-Y-S Garden Journal. She is one of my garden friends and so inspiring. She's both on YouTube and on Instagram and she is like the sheet mulching queen. So if you have any questions about sheet mulching, I'm definitely not the one to ask. This is the first time I've done it. And I definitely recommend you check out her page because she has done some seriously phenomenal things with sheet mulching. Okay, so now, oh my gosh, you guys, look. Look how beautiful everything is looking. I know you can hear my excitement because I am truly excited. I can't believe that this was not here and now it is here. Now I still have work to do, so don't look too close. <laughs> but I mean, I'm so pleased with it. I'm so happy that I kind of abandoned the fact, okay, I put in the work last year with the other raised beds and just followed my gut and did what I knew was the right thing. Having this area connecting the shed and the greenhouse and the bench and the raised beds was the right decision. And it just feels good to me. I enjoy being out here more than I ever have, more than I ever enjoyed being in the other vegetable garden area. It was always tight. Um, it just didn't look right to me. It didn't feel right to me. So I didn't spend the amount of time out there that I would like to. So lots of things going on. I have things I still have to plant. Uh, I have gravel, as you can see the ends here, because I'm shoveling away gravel in this area and moving it, uh, you know, wheelbarrowfuls of it over to this area and manually shoving it over because I don't want to you know, I want to use that gravel in this new space and, and I don't want to order more gravel. So that's what I'm doing. Um, and it's working out great. I've got lettuce in here that is just, it's too late that I planted the lettuce because it's hot. It's getting hot and that lettuce is going to just fry up. Um, but you know, I just want to get some lettuce in the ground. I've never, I've never planted lettuce and I was really excited, um, to plant those. So I did, um, a little strawberry pot. That's a rhubarb that definitely, needs to bulk up. I planted that from seed a couple years ago, but it was in more of the shady, you know, vegetable garden. So it wasn't benefiting from all this wonderful sun. You can see the wonderful sun this area gets, and I'm sure it will 
beef up and bulk up and everything in the years to come. But I am, I'm really, really happy with it. I'm really, and I'm happy that Mark and I built these beds. I really like them. I think that they're just nice and simple. It's just enough for me. I've got some garlic in here and cabbage and some little pansies, some nasturtiums, um, little herb baskets and things. Um, just, you know, I'm having a ball, you guys. I love the fountain here as a focal point. I just think it works out so well. Back here, I've got tons of herbs, uh, some zinnias, some peppers, and that's my potato bed. Um, I have those U-shaped bamboos in there because uh, potatoes get really kind of, you know, floppy and they'll, they'll get tall too. So what I'll do is I'll take some twine and kind of just zigzag along this. I had the U-shaped going all the way around, but I thought it looked too much like a playpen. <laughs> so I took them out on the, on the other sides. And how can I not mention this beautiful new Dawn Rose that is in its prime right now? Absolutely beautiful. Eventually I'd like to have some uh, lattice, mount some lattice uh, or trellising to the roof and let her go up onto the roof because she wants to. And it's a really beautiful look if you guys haven't seen that before uh, with people that, you know, you see even in Cape Cod where they have like the trellising and roses growing on the roofs and it's really pretty. Really, really pretty. I love the little ledge with my Wakefield flower pots. The hostas are a beast. They definitely need to be divided next year. I say this all the time and every year they just get more and more gar gargantuan. Um, some rosemary, that's an Invincible Limetta in the back. I love that shrub, so I kind of pop those in all over the place. I hope this garlic is okay. I did transplant it. I see it's got some scapes on here. I should cut those off. Um, usually garlic doesn't do too hot with transplants. I've got tomatoes in the pots over here. I just planted those kind of late with a lot of things. These are um, sugar and sugar snap peas, which I love. I've been just coming over every day and grabbing a couple peas. I snack on these while I'm in the garden. I think it's so pretty. And over here, you can see this is definitely a work in progress. So that's where the other raised beds were. I literally just started raking down that area uh, yesterday on Memorial Day. That was, that's how I spent my Memorial Day uh, in the garden. I would have it no other way. So over there, I'm not quite sure what I'm gonna do. I think I might move the bench down. It gets an awful lot of shade, especially in this area. And maybe plant some blue hydrangeas, um, you know, some mop, mop head hydrangeas and things that would appreciate the afternoon shade a little bit more. Things that I haven't been able to really have in my garden. Um, I'm thinking that, but it won't be like another defined hedge of boxwoods. I feel like that's going to be a little bit more free and maybe the bench right there facing the parterre. But you can see how you can enjoy this now from, from backyard and the side yard here. I really love it. I think it's going to look great. I really, really do. I have some little bits of cardboard out here where I am. Oh, we took this tump out. See, this is why I haven't put up a YouTube in a while. This is all germinating um, Dutch white clover that you see right here. But man, we had a time removing this stump ourselves. It was not easy. And there's still some of it, but it's below grade and it will eventually decompose. You know, the, it's all hacked up. Uh, Mark and I, and, and, you know, I was out here hacking at this thing with an ax. I had an ax. We had a manual saw. We had a chainsaw. We just went at it like the big loppers. So it's gone. And I'm so glad. <laughs> so, so glad not to see that stump sticking up any longer. Oh, and if you guys are working on any borders, I have found that this works out really great to lay out your path. Of course, it's all kinked up right now because I've been messing around. But this is just like quarter inch strip tube. And that's how I laid out my, my line, my curve there. It helps so much. That's just like a big stake that I put down. And then 
landscape staples to kind of pin it down in the shape that you want. I've seen people use hoses and ropes and things like that, and those work great too. But I had a bunch of this and it just works really great because this is gonna be a bed too. Like I said, I wanna have a flower bed right here at the patio. So I'm gonna do some more sheet mulching. I have some cardboard down there now, um, but there's a lot of work to be done. I have some beautiful iceberg roses that I want to plant right here at the patio to be able to enjoy those. Um, you know, just the, the scent and the, you know, the white flowers, especially in the evening for at the patio, I think it would be beautiful. Okay, so this is another big change. <laughs> I feel like I haven't talked to you guys in so long. This is the Royal Raindrops Crab Apple that was back in the other side garden against the fence. I just felt like it was wrong there. Um, lots of reasons. Um, I started to see it was suffering and not happy where it was. So I removed it and I planted it here a couple weeks ago and she's thriving and doing, doing her thing and loving life in this spot. So I've been keeping good water on it and um, really making sure that it survives here because this in the afternoon is a full blasting sun and missing this plum tree you know we've really noticed in the house so much intense sun sitting here on the patio we can't even really enjoy it because it's so bright so you know we will sit at the table with the umbrella but it would be nice to be able to sit here like we used to be able to do when we had the plum tree um the royal raindrops is persistent with its crab apples I believe uh, from what I've observed it doesn't really drop them and the birds eat them before they would be able to drop anyway and it is similar in color to the plum tree that I had and kind of also mirrors the same coloring as the blood good Japanese maple that dark burgundy color so I think it's going to be perfect here lots of changes you guys so i hope you understand you know why i have not been present but i'm going to get back to my once a week posting uh starting now so this is my this is my beginning and then next week you'll see what else is going on in the garden i planted up also yesterday this whole border with with a bunch of different things maybe i'll talk to you about that in a different video um but here's that iceberg rose and it is just lovely it is just lovely. I've never had iceberg roses. I don't really have very many shrub roses. I have a lot of climbing roses and I thought that the iceberg roses would be beautiful. So that's it. That's my update. I'm really uh, looking forward to a great growing season and um, I've got more to plant in the greenhouse still, some little starts and things, but it's just, it's been a joy. It's been wonderful. It's been wonderful having this sink. I use it, oh gosh, every day, multiple times a day. It's been just fantastic. So there we have it. I hope you guys are doing great. Enjoying now, you know, the official start of summer and just uh, stopping to smell the roses. <laughs> and I will see you guys in the next video. Thank you guys so much for being here.